Requesting and processing payments quickly from customers is always a challenge. And it's even more difficult in our new normal when we're limiting close interactions and avoiding them all together if possible. It turns out that collecting money from more than six feet away can be kind of tricky. <laughs> That's why we're so excited about our next session where you'll hear about a new way to request and receive payments via text. It's safe, simple, secure, and it keeps revenue coming through the door. ZipWhip's co-founder and chief business development officer, John Larson, is going to host a conversation between our partners at Authvia and some of our customers using our newest offering, text to pay They'll show you how to request and process payments faster than ever and explain how with text to pay your customers can make payments simply by texting you the last four digits of their phone number. Sending money literally couldn't be easier than this. But without further ado, let's turn it over to John. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our text to pay discussion. I'm John Larson, co-founder and chief business development officer at ZipWhip. And with me today, I have Chris Bruner, founder and CEO of Authvia, our text to pay partner, Connie Zigo, owner at Park Lake Creamery in Michigan, and Susie Kasnowitz, marketing director at North Shore Humane Society in Louisiana. Thank you all for agreeing to spend some time with us on this panel today. The first part of our discussion is focused on what text to pay is and why it's quickly turning into a preferred form of digital engagement. A popular term used to describe this is conversational commerce. ZipWhip has been in the business texting space for six years now, providing that two-way conversation, but we've never been able to close the loop with a payment. And we can do that today with Authvia as our partner. The second part of our discussion will then be focused on two interviews with people that are using it today in their business to better describe how it's functioning and how their consumers, their customers actually prefer it. So Chris, you're first up. Um, we both have an extensive background in messaging. Um, it goes back nearly two decades to the good old days of Ryan Seacrest and American Idol, teaching America how to text. They were voting in uh, by text. Um, at that point, texting took off and it's still here going super strong. Um, during all these conferences that we've met up and with our, our peers and colleagues, we've talked about the day when you can order a pizza over a text and you can pay for it right then and there. You don't have to talk to somebody. That's one of many use cases that we're seeing today. It's, it's actually happening. It's here. Um, but for the audience, you've got so many different verticals and different industries and businesses that are benefiting from text to pay. I'm hoping that you can share some of those stories and how they're using it today. So I'm going to turn it over to you. Please share a few use cases. Absolutely. Thank you, uh, John, for having us here. Uh, this is exciting. So we've been doing uh, text payments uh, for about the last five years. We've seen it emerge across just a plethora of different industries. It's kind of crazy how many industries are starting to embrace it today. Um, you mentioned SMS kind of in 03, right? It's really started to grow. And I believe we're at the precipice of just humongous growth around messaging and, and what it can do for merchants and consumers alike. We see so many different use cases, everything from insurance companies to banks, um, to auto service centers, to dental, uh, you name it. There are companies that are embracing the ability to have a conversation with the consumer and then in that same message, be able to take a payment, a donation, uh, whether that's over credit, debit, ACH, uh, it, it really doesn't matter. What's been exciting about the partnership with ZipWhip is that this is the first time that we've ever really embedded ourselves, the, the text to pay from off via, API or the technology into a two-way chat between a merchant and a consumer. Um, it has enabled a whole new array of opportunities to kind of emerge as we've kind of rolled this out with you in partnership over the last 60 days. And we're now seeing it. Uh, in fact, I was just looking at our dashboard before this call and we have uh, just in the last hour, we've had payments from a printing company, from a credit union, uh, from a law firm, an auto finance company. Um, we just, you know, a medical veterinarian clinic. So what's exciting about this is it's being used and being leveraged in areas that, frankly, we had just never envisioned it being taken out to. And that's really in large part due to the massive distribution that ZIP provides today with you know, tens of thousands of merchants out there uh, that are already having these great conversations and now just needed to do that last final step in the process. And that was to get paid. Got it. So 
let's um, let's play this out. I'm a consumer. I'm texting with you. You're answering questions. Um, you're an insurance agent. And I want to talk about that very first experience and then making a payment thereafter, what, what that looks like. So we're, we're talking, I need to renew my policy. And yeah, let's do it right now. Help me understand that first experience. What happens right there during that conversation? Yeah, so I'll walk you through kind of the initial setup, and then I'm also going to walk you through about what's so different and unique about what we at Althea do versus what is the traditional text to pay uh, out there in the world today. So in that first scenario, you and I are chatting over the ZipWhip channel. Uh, I realize that, you know, you need to renew your policy. It's, you know, $495. Uh, you say, yeah, you know what, I do need to get that renewed. Uh, how do I pay it? I'm going to say, well, hold on one second. I'm going to go ahead and just send that invoice uh, through a little uh, widget that's embedded in the templates that ZipWhip has for its partners today. It'll come across to you, and it'll be a little link, a bit.ly link that you'll click on. You'll add a credit, a debit, an ACH one time, and then you're done. What's, what's new and different and about where this is all going now is once you've done that, any time after that, you'll simply just, I'll be able to send you another notification as your insurance partner. I'll be able to say, hey, John, we want to upgrade your insurance. It's going to be an extra $75 a month. Do you want that? You say, yes, I'll send that to you. This time there won't be a link. It'll just be an authorization for you to reply with the last four of your mobile phone number. As soon as you do that, that $75 transaction will run. Uh, and then our conversation uh, will be complete. And so every time that you move forward with this insurance company and John, you as our customer, you'll be able to simply and easily approve or authorize uh, a bill, an invoice, a transaction, whatever's needed. All right, great. Because I call that a live payment. It does not get any better than that. I don't have to click on a link and go to another web page the next time around. All I have to do is reply back with the last four digits of my, my mobile phone number. Correct. All right, terrific. But the one question I have, and I think people on this, um, on the, on this discussion will also have, is I enter my, my information where does that go? Where is it stored? Yeah, you know, security was the very first thing we had to tackle when we started this, right? So I came out of the wireless space. Um, it took us over two and a half years to get approved over Chase. Um, and so you can imagine, you know, we integrate today with over 25 different payment processors and gateways. It is a long process to get them to believe that everything that you're doing is secure. The beauty of what we do is when that when that consumer enters that card information at any time, it's entered into it and tokenized. It's secured, it's tokenized, and it's vaulted at the bank. My team, your team, no call has any access to that data at any point in time. All right. And with respect to a consumer, sometimes you don't want to give your information over the phone if it's written down on a napkin somewhere, go back to the pizza parlor case, been ordering a lot of food during COVID. And they want me to go inside and make that payment. But I get to control as the consumer how that information is shared in a secure way and it never goes over and written down. So I, I just think that's something that from a consumer standpoint is incredibly important. Well, and, and maybe from a consumer standpoint, it is important. It's also incredibly important from a merchant standpoint, right? So you mentioned, you know, taking that information over the phone, right? So that is outside the standards of what is PCI A or PCI, which is the payment industry security standards, right? So when you call into a pizza shop and they write your credit card information down, hang up and then type it into a credit card, that's technically illegal. Um, what's beautiful about this solution is you can actually order that two large pizzas and two, two Cokes. I've got your address on file already. I know your mobile number. They hang up that order through a simple technical integration will come right to my phone. I'll authorize the two large pizzas and the two diet Cokes and make that payment. Never having to stop and write that information down, never having to give that to the merchant. The merchant's not never exposed to that. Um, the consumer's left in control. And for recurring payments, right, where I might have, um, you know, maybe it's a, a veterinarian service that I, you know, my dog has an illness and I'm going in every single month for shots and for meds and things of that nature. I don't, I no longer have to um, walk inside, swipe my card, dip my card. They'll hit me with a simple SMS that says, hey, Coco's, you know, shots uh, are today at three o'clock at $75. Do you approve that authorization? I say yes with a simple four digit pin. I take Coco there, they take her out of the car, they take her in, they give her shots, and then they bring her back out. 
So it, it removes PCI compliance from the merchant and it provides a very secure environment for the consumer where they're never handling over any of their bank account information, any of their other credentials, and they're safe and secure in their wallet. All right. So honestly, it just seems too good to be true that you can have contactless payments. I'm in control of it from a consumer. If I do it once, you would think I would do it again. Do you have any data points that talk about repeat usage? How hard is it to get somebody to actually try that experience? The payment request comes in. I get it. Do I follow through and make that payment? And then after that, do you have any data points on repeat usage? Yeah, so as I mentioned, we've been doing this for about five years. We've run over $100 million in transactions over text uh, through our platform. We have enormous amounts of data across at least 20 different industries. What we have seen time and time again is on that first notification, 65% will pay on that first text. Another 15% will pay on the second or the third text. And the other 20% will find another way to pay. They might go inside and pay. They might pay online. Uh, they might send in a check for all that we know. Um, but what's, what the first time they use it, um, after about six months, 80% will use that same form of payment over text month in and month out. And it's because of what you said at the beginning of this intro right here, and that is that it is literally that simple. If you're sitting at your kid's soccer game, if you're getting on a plane, if you're you know mowing the grass, you don't need a password, you don't need to download an app, you don't need to log in, you don't need your merchant account information. It's like, it's in your pocket. It's saying, hey, you know, I need to make that payment to my lawyer or to my credit union or to, you know, for my car payment. I've got money in my account. I simply apply one, two, one, two. And that payment goes over the existing payment rails. We don't interfere with what the merchants do today. It goes right into their bank account. We never see the money. Uh, it's incredibly secure for the consumer and convenient. All right. Terrific. Um, do you have any closing remarks, Chris? I mean, is there anybody that can't use this? this program, it sounds like you're meeting the customers where they are and you can leverage the existing uh, merchants of the current work. Yeah, so what was, in, what was most critical to me when we started down this path, and I had come out of running a business where I had 55 different mobile apps and I would spend tons of advertising from a large media company to keep them afloat and keep them going. Um, and I understood that, you know, getting a consumer to download an app was one thing, getting them to use it was a whole other thing. And, and it was generally a, a small subset of the larger group. We needed something that was ubiquitous. It worked on every phone. We needed something that you didn't have to train people how to do. Everyone from seven to 70 knows how to text, right? We needed something that worked with every payment processor out there. We needed something that was just intuitive to the, between the consumer and the merchant. So today, uh, we work on, you know, I want to say 95% of the of phones out there globally, and it's an over-the-top messaging app. So, you know, it's, you might be in Snapchat, you might be on an app, you might be on a video conference call, but when that text comes in or, or on that device that you're on, you're going to see it. And it's why the open rates are so high. It's why uh, the success rates with it are so high. Um, and on top of that, we do zero marketing. We will never market or spam any of these customers. We are there to help drive what is most critical to these businesses, right? So maybe a service alert or service outage, but most importantly, getting that payment and getting it paid in real time, whether that's a donation uh, or a, you know, an invoice or a bill or a, a monthly recurring payment. You know, our goal is to facilitate and connect those parties together to have a very, um, a, a painless experience, if you will, not calling in and sitting on an IVR, talking to an agent, not having to write a check and mail it in, not standing in line to make a payment, uh, simply getting a text and responding to it uh, and moving on with your day. We all live some pretty busy lives. Absolutely. I call texting a productivity tool for consumers. We love and adore it. It's why we're selling that, that bridge for businesses to have access to it on their existing phone number. Um, it's the highest priority medium that I can think of. Um, and, um, you know, I always say the best feature of SMS is ubiquity. Yep. It's already turned on. So let, let's close out this part of our session. Thank you so much for, for your time. And we're going to transition over to Connie um, and ask uh, some questions, and then we'll move on to Susie. But Connie, um, do you mind giving just a quick background on, on your business up there in Michigan? And, and then we can get into some Q&A. Sure. So uh, I operate uh, a high-end gourmet dessert shop. So it's it's chocolate, ice cream, and and coffee. 
And there's a fair amount of complexity to it because we have a pretty wide, diverse customers set, you know, from little kids that show up with their mom that want to get an ice cream cone to elderly folks that are looking for a $75 box of chocolates. We've got a range. And I had to solve a problem around dealing with COVID. In March, we got uh, the notification that we needed to cease operations from our state in Michigan. And so we went dark for several months and there was a lot of customer pressure to reopen. Um, other places reopened before us. And like I say, we look like an ice cream shop from, from the road. So um, like a lot of other ice cream shops around us, like comps, if you wanna look at them that way, they inevitably would open and then be forced to shut down again. We saw this happen at least four times in shops that were within 20 miles of ours, which means they would open up, they would try to do business as usual, you know, the normal queuing lines at an order window and a pickup window. Um, their, their employees would wear masks. There was signage for the customers to wear masks, but they would attempt to try to con to, con, you know, to consummate the transactions, if you will, in the same way with maybe just a little extra barriers and it, and it just wasn't working. So I knew that if we reopened, especially with our, with our base of customers being so diverse, um, with some serious at-risk customers as part of our portfolio, right, of, of customers, we needed to take this uh, COVID very seriously and we needed to, to solve the problem with, with some kind of technology. And uh, so I went looking for a solution and that's what led me in this direction. All right, terrific. And so how many people are part of your business and how many people are actually using and are familiar with text to pay So here's what we did. So we already had the concept of people texting our phone number. So that wasn't new. Um, what we needed to do is to solve the problem of concurrency, multiple people coming into the shop at once. We wanted uh, to prevent people from having to we want a contactless payment system and a contactless order system, and we did not want to have people milling around. That, that, that tends to be a problem. If you, from the time that you place your order to the time that you receive your order, this is where people generally don't know what to do. So they kind of mill around, and, and therein lies a problem. So what we did was we, we told people the text menu to our shop number. Our shop number... Uh, is enabled by ZipWhip, right? So we would bounce back. We we bounce back um, a link to to our website. This little tiny menu system, not an app. There's no way we could handle this problem with an app for the reasons that Chris mentioned. I can't get people to use an app. I couldn't. I couldn't. I don't have enough money to build an app complicated enough to deal with all the ins and outs of of the ordering process. Um, and I don't. And you know, to get them to download it and to use it, forget that. So. We, we basically have them text menu, they bounce back, a URL bounces back to them, it pops up a menu on their screen, a little web thing. And what they then do, and, and I was kind of cagey about this, we really don't tell them what to do next. So what this does is it forces them to like, well, okay, what do I do? So they, they, te they text something like their name or or whatever they think, and this conversation starts. And suddenly they realize, oh, there's a human being here. And so we start this whole chit chat back and forth. And what I'm doing in this chit chat, it's myself or one of my own employees, is we're, we're basically honing the order, right? We're getting down to what they want and what options they want, et cetera. And as soon as I get to the magic point where I've, I know what they want and how much it costs, Again, I'm just real smooth about this. I'll, I'll be like, well, you know, let me send you a payment link and, and we'll go from there. And I send out that payment link and then I hold my breath because it's at that point where it's either going to happen or it's not going to happen. Now, what I mean by that is, you know, the, the automated message goes out. Um, it basically tells them how much to pay and what the item description is, which is just a little template in ZipWhip. Yeah. By the way, there is no integration for all of you people on the audience. Like if there was an integration with this, I forgot it. It was so fast. It was basically just a template that's correctly structured. And as soon as you do that, it's, it works. So you, what I mean is you hold your breath, you send it out. What will they do? Will they, will they, you know, complete 
or will they send you back some nonsense or what will happen? My numbers are a lot better than apparently the average numbers because I'm at 95%. Wow. 95, I lose 5% of the people to confusion. Those 5%, I got options. I can text them some more. I can call them on the phone. I can do whatever, but somehow 95% of the people, they transact. And once they're in, they're in. I mean, the next time to their reorder is ridiculously easy. That's incredible. So tell me a little bit more about that reordering. How, how often do people come to your business and do you have any stories like a couple that comes to mind? Is this just like a recurring thing that happens? They reply back with the last four digits of their, their mobile phone and I just pick up the ice cream. Well, we did this in two stages. The first stage we did because I was nervous. I wasn't sure how this was going to go. So I thought, okay, and we hadn't opened yet. So I thought, okay, I know what to do. I'll just do a pre-order. The concept of a pre-order, which is just, you know, meet me on a Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday. Our shop is closed, but if you'd like to order something, we'll package it up and we'll have it ready for you and, and you can pick it up. Um, you know, they text when they get there. I text, hey, you know, it's ready, come to the window, et cetera. You have to remember too, this texting can be happening anywhere. While I'm at home, when I'm at the warehouse, I'm upstairs, I'm downstairs. It's not just me. We've got multiple devices going. I got it up on laptops and computers all over the place. So the conversation just keeps, you know, keeps moving depending upon where I am. And pre-orders I've discovered take a long time because they're, they're thinking about it. You know, ice cream sandwiches are seven bucks a piece. They got a whole family of people. They got to figure out what the flavors they want, et cetera. So from the moment, from the first text to the end, that can sometimes take 15 20 minutes, 30 minutes even. Um, meanwhile, I've stacked other orders on top of it. So that, that was the kind of flow we saw in the, in the beginning when we did the pre-order business. Um, and what we noticed were that the order, the order amounts were significantly higher, like four or five times higher than our average ticket prices. Insane insanely different. So we were seeing 60, 70, $80 orders coming through when we'd never seen them before. That got it seeded. That's what I did to seed it. Then when we finally decided to open only three days a week, mm -hmm. those customers were already trained. And so then they would start to say, oh, just, you know, I want caramel latte and such and such a thing. And uh, I would just hit them with the payment link and they would respond back and they didn't they didn't want to come to the window, even though our window was open. We never touched their, their credit cards. It was much safer for our employees. Yeah. Um, they preferred it because it was easy. So that was our experience. Okay. Well, just one last question, and then we're going to jump over to Susie. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm a trained marketer. That's, that's where I really hung out in, in business. And um, it's all about creating demand and really focusing on the best experience for your customer. Plain and simple. That's it. Nothing else matters. It's all about that user experience. It sounds like your customers are enjoying th this function. Do you see this just growing over the next few years? Is this going to become mainstream? Like once people try it, I'm, I'm just curious your thoughts because you're, you got a technology background and we used to know each other back in the telecom days. Mm -hmm. Thoughts about where this is going to end up. It has a lot to do marketing, it has a lot to do with marketing and how you present it to customers. It is a little, it depends, our business has always been, you know, come up to the window. Mm -hmm. If you, if you don't put it out there that, that this, that texting is, is important or is the way in which you want to interact with the customer, they will default to the easiest route, which is to come to the window. Mm -hmm. So it is incumbent upon me to continue to make that happen except for the people that truly now prefer this method. Mm -hmm. And we do have some, some percentage. I don't exactly know what it is, but there are some percentage of people that this is the only way that they order now. So we've trained them. So the COVID event forced it, but now there's a, there's a, there's a lingering acceptance and excitement about it. Um, and like I said, it's all about the reorder. Once you can suffer through the first, the first transaction, the holding your breath part when you send them the first one, <laughs> okay? If once you get them, I feel like, okay, that's a banked customer. Once they're in, 
I've got them for the future. And so it's really all of my effort went to that. I even, I even did this. I even went one step further on my website. Instead of posting where my hours were, I refused to do that. I took that off. I said, if you want to know when we're open, text hours to our phone number. Yeah. And then I responded with our hours, but then I also gave them the idea to text menu and from menu, then they learned about the text ordering. And so I've just reinforced that loop. Right on. Well, thank you. That's been super helpful. Um, we're going to transition over to Susie. Um, Susie, you've been using text to pay quite differently from my understanding. If you could give a, a quick background on the Humane Society that you're the marketing director for and, and how you're using it, that'd be super helpful. Sure. Um, I work for North Shore Humane Society. Uh, we're a completely independent, no kill rescue. Uh, we also have a full service community veterinary clinic. Um, but uh, what we use the text to pay for is primarily donations. Um, and just like Connie did, we use a keyword. So um, we will blast out a, a big text about maybe a second chance animal that needs a degree or um, hopefully when COVID ends, you know, tickets to a fundraiser and they can reply with that uh, keyword and that will get the, the ball rolling. All right. So, um, how many people are in your business? Um, we have over 15,000 contacts that we text to, um, just like we email, uh, we have about 15,000. How many people are working at the business though? Oh, um, we have 40 to 50 employees. And how many of them are using texting and now text to pay? I'm the only one <laughs> that manages the the software. All right. Now, do you have any numbers or any data points that are worth sharing that that, uh, that the audience might benefit from? Um, as far as a percentage, I would say um, maybe about 55% actually will send back the keyword. And then of those, um, you know, I, I hold my breath as well. Um, I'm not sure the exact percentage, but it's good enough that it's worth it. And then um, if they don't follow through with it, we always call them after or we'll. Now, I, I heard of a story, a heartwarming story where you were raising money for a particular animal. If you can just share that story. I think oh, that yeah. Um, I'm not sure if it was Penny or Star. She was star with us but now she's penny i think her name was penny through the text um marketing but she needed a surgery and we you know sent it out to everybody and we were able to raise enough money for her to have her surgery um i can't recall if it was knee or a hip i think it was hip dysplasia and so she much better she's a doctor her name is now and um you know all of that was possible through donations would you have any uh, closing remark just for other people that are thinking about using text to pay for donations specifically? Um, is it easy to use? Um, it sounds like it, it's worked, but. Um. Yeah, I can, you know, agree with everybody here that the integration was really easy. Um, you know, being that there is no app, nothing you have to download. It's, you know, it's streamlined. Everything's very easy for the user. Um, you know, in addition to blasting out text messages to 15,000 people, we also put our keywords all over everything. So um, if I'm sending out an email, I'm going to say text second chance 25 to our phone number. Or um, when we go on the news, mm -hmm. uh, you know, our local news, we'll have it on the bottom of the screen. So not only just pushing it to our current contacts, but putting it in all marketing aspects um, to try to get more people to donate that's no, perfect use case we're seeing radio stations using it media mm -hmm. all vision etc um there, there's no easier way so i'm glad it's working for you thank uh, you thank you for, for joining and thank you to the rest of the guests we're going to wrap it up here but we're going to do some q a so make sure you stick around and bring whatever questions you have thank you very much